So you like Workhorse and you got caught up in the YouTube summer hype about them. Now you're stuck with the stock. Let me tell you, you'll win more horse races with a thoroughbred than you'll ever win with a unicorn. In the immortal words of the famed singing trio group, TLC, please stop chasing waterfalls, stick with the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. Welcome to MGA Investing. My name is Dee. This video is part two of a four-part comprehensive stock analysis of Workhorse using the dumb method to help you better distinguish between unicorns, thoroughbreds, and mules. The first video in this series covered the D and the dumb method. You can find that link to that video below in the description. This video will address the U and the dumb method, which details the importance of understanding how a company makes money. As a short recap, the dumb method, if you've watched any of my other stock analysis, is an easy to replicate, reliable method for analyzing an investment without the need for sophisticated math and saying spreadsheet skills or stock analyzing software. If you can read, well, you can analyze. It's a stock analysis process that I've used successfully for nearly two decades. I'm a firm believer if you can't describe what you do as a process, you don't know what you're doing. Having a process is absolutely essential to long-term success in the stock market. It adds needed structure and consistency to the decision-making process and neutralizes emotions and biases in the buying and selling decision that clouds good judgment. The benefit of understanding why a company makes money is that it helps us make more sense out of a company's financial reporting and forecast. It also helps us better discern the reality of a company's future revenues from the smoke and mirrors offered by analysts, pump and dump schemers, and YouTubers pumping their video channel. The truth is, if you don't understand how the company makes money, do you really understand the business? The most useful tools for this will be the most recent annual report, also known as a 10K or quarterly report, such as a 10Q, which simply means it is an unaudited report. Don't let the thoughts or review on these reports scare you. They're not that difficult to read if you know what you're looking for. Remember, accounting to some extent is the language of business and the parts of the language you need to know for investments. Well, it's not that difficult to learn. I want to look at the most recent 10Q to see how the company is actually performing over the comparable quarter last year. Here I'm looking for things that stick out from the normal to substantiate the story the company is telling me about why it did or didn't make money. Looking at the condensed consolidated statements of operations, one of the first things that I noticed at the top of the page is that this is an unaudited report. Makes sense because, well, it's a 10Q. On the top line, sales, net of returns, and allowances, when comparing the two quarters, 2021 and 2020, I see a significant loss of nearly $600,000 compared to the same period last year when they made $564,000. I can find more detail about what they're blaming this loss on in their detailed financial notes within the 10Q. Now, I also immediately race down to net loss where there's a $51 million loss versus $84 million lost last year. So there's no net profit resulting from the business operations. There's a lot to look at, but I want to scroll down to page nine to find out what parts of the business are producing revenue and how that revenue is segmented. Under the section, are revenues related to the following types of businesses were as follows. I can see revenue comes through three sources. Automotive, which is negative 535,000 versus 560,000 from the same period last year. I know looking at this, some of you may be asking yourself, how do you sell negative revenue? This is a result of Workhorse's recall of its C-1000 trucks due to an unresolvable performance issue that couldn't be repaired through means of an on-site visit or simple shop repair. Workhorse still hasn't been able to resolve the issue, so the company recalled and refunded owners of the C-1000 trucks. So there's no revenue for aviation, which relates to their drone sales, which is still in development. This might have some application in rural areas, but we'll have to see where it goes. If I were a current shareholder or possibly looking to add shares of Workhorse, I wouldn't hang my hat on Workhorse's drone development and deployment program. Just because something is new doesn't necessarily make it innovative or marketable in a sense. Think about it, is the drone program solving a problem that is akin to a mosquito bite or shark bite in the home or business delivery system? Clients aren't willing to spend large sums of money to address a mosquito bite size problem, which I believe this is. Now, I could be wrong, but we'll see. Maybe there's another case used for it that is not yet materialized. In the other section, we have shipping and handling charges, extended vehicle warranties, and non-warranty after sales vehicle services. Total sales, net of returns, and allowances, well, it's a negative 576,000. 
dollars. So as far as I've been able to delineate, there's no complexity and understanding how they make money is pretty straightforward. They manufacture and sell commercial EV trucks with 650 to 1200 cubic feet of cargo space, which would concern me greatly if I were a shareholder because it seems like they may not be making enough revenue from their one product and no real material market in the future for drone sales to cover current or near future costs. Typically, when I cover understanding how a company makes money, there's a lot more material to cover, but in the case of Workhorse, there's really not much here to discuss. That in itself should be a red flag unless the product the company is offering is in high demand and the company has a significant durable competitive advantage. In the next video, part three of this four-part Workhorse comprehensive stock analysis, I'll discuss the first M, M1, or management, where I measure management effectiveness, the third critical component in the dumb method stock analysis. This is management's scorecard on their ability to transform the vision of the company into a reality. I score the ease of understanding how Workhorse makes money good, but their prospects for continuing to grow their revenue and their current structure does not look good given their product development. And for that reason, well, I give them a score of three out of a possible 10. The summary of their dumb score thus far into this four-part analysis is durable competitive advantage, a score of three. I recommend you go back and watch that video if you haven't seen it so you have a better sense of how this all comes together as a stock analysis process. I will tell you, it's not looking good for Workhorse so far, but I'll complete the next two pieces of the analysis so you can see how I work through the entire analysis of a company using the dumb method. This speaks to the importance of having a solid, consistent stock analysis process that leads to sound stock selection for your portfolio. If you found this video helpful, click that thumbs up icon and subscribe so you can be the first to be notified of the release of part three of this four part workhorse comprehensive stock analysis using the dumb method, the most comprehensive stock analysis of workhorse on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video in this series.